Many people in Sierra Leone crowded around television sets to watch the International Criminal Court deliver its verdict in Charles Taylor's trial. While some cheered, others quietly sighed with relief. Atika Schubert shows us some of that reaction. I will ask the accused, Mr. Taylor, would you please stand for the verdict of the trial chamber? It took more than five long years for the International Court on Sierra Leone to come to this moment. The trial chamber unanimously finds you guilty of aiding and abetting the commission of the following crimes. And it took Judge Lusick nearly two hours to read a list of horrific crimes, enslavement, rape, murder and mutilation. Civilians were forced to endure cruel treatment, including having words carved into their bodies and amputations of limbs. All carried out by rebel forces who were armed and funded by Charles Taylor. Taylor saw neighboring Sierra Leone as a source of diamonds and wanted to overthrow its government. The former Liberian leader showed no emotion as the verdict was read out. But in Sierra Leone, where the wounds of war are clearly visible, a feeling of relief and justice at last. If you go along with healing the wounds that many Sierra Leoneans have about the war, because I believe in anything, if justice is not done, Apart from whatever physical assistance that can be given to people, justice goes a long way to heal the wounds. But in neighboring Liberia, emotions were mixed. Taylor's supporters are angry. There was no fair trial, fair trial in the President Taylor case today. I feel that there was international conspiracy. President Taylor never who armed and went to Sierra Leone. He now went to go fight in Sierra Leone. But prosecutor Brenda Hollis says there is a historic precedent that has been set with the first former head of state to be indicted, tried and convicted by an international court. Today's historic judgment reinforces the new reality that heads of state cannot hide behind their positions, that they will be held to account for war crimes and other international crimes. No person, no matter how highly placed he or she is, is above the law. So what happens next? Well, take a look at this calendar. Charles Taylor has just 14 days to launch an appeal, and his sentencing hearing has been set for May 16th. Now, prosecutors cannot ask for a life sentence or a death sentence. They can only ask for a set number of years. When will the judge make that final decision? That comes up on May 30th, and that's when Charles Taylor will know if he's going to prison for just how long. There is no prison in Sierra Leone or anywhere in West Africa felt to be secure enough to hold Taylor. Instead, he may find himself behind bars in Britain, where the government has volunteered a high-security prison to hold him. Atika Schubert, CNN, London.